Recently, a study was released to report the discovery of microplastics in human blood. Now, we've heard about plastics in the ocean and plastics in our food, but plastics in our blood? That's a completely new discovery, and that's actually quite alarming. With plastic production expected to nearly double in the next 20 years, plastics are certainly not going away anytime soon, which means that this problem is likely to get worse over the course of time. Now, in this video, we're going to be breaking down a number of things. The first is we're going to be talking about what microplastics are and where you can find them. The next thing we'll talk about is what the most important research says about the dangers of microplastics in human blood. Then we'll talk about how microplastics can affect your health and if you should be concerned or not. And finally, we'll talk about the best practices for avoiding microplastics exposure in your life today. And you'll want to watch until the end because this information can help you make simple changes that can have a very profound effect on your overall health. So what exactly is this new research? Well, Microplastics were found in human blood for the first time recently, according to a study founded by the Dutch National Organization for Health Research and Development and Common Seas. It was a small-scale study taking a novel testing method to a small group of 22 anonymous donors, but the results were pretty shocking, with 17 of the 22 participants testing positive for microplastics. Now, previously, studies had shown that infants, children, and adults had all showed signs of microplastics throughout the digestive tracts. But the fact that these micropollutants are now making their way into the bloodstream is a novel discovery that was recently published. The team of researchers has made it clear that they plan to repeat the study with a much larger sample size, especially since there was a major variance in the amount of microplastics that were found from participant to participant. But as a whole, this represents a pretty important warning to health officials around the world, which is that microplastics are now migrated to a completely different tissue. So you might be asking yourself, well, what are microplastics? Why do I even care about them, right? They are exactly what they sound like. Microplastics are microscopic plastic particles. They're usually created in one of two ways, either from the breakdown or weathering of larger plastics into smaller pieces, or by being intentionally created like in facial scrubs or other products. Either way, the result is microscopic plastic particles, and they're created by the billions or even trillions, and they are prominent. They are everywhere. They've been found from the top of Mount Everest all the way to the bottom of the Marianas Trench and everywhere in between. In fact, plastics are so widely distributed around planet Earth that researchers have dubbed this era as the era of the plasticine because plastics are everywhere and they're effectively inescapable. Now, you're probably wondering whether you should be concerned about microplastics in your blood. Well, it's certainly worth being aware of the potential risk of microplastics, especially as they may be becoming more prominent in many ecosystems. And while it's not time to start freaking out, there are definitely some health risks that are being discovered. Some studies have shown that high concentrations of microplastics can produce immune and stress responses. Another study showed that high concentrations caused micro lesions throughout the body and could cause blood toxicity and increase your risk for the development of cancer. Another study showed that microplastics can cause metabolic disturbances and problems amongst many different endocrine tissues. And finally, there have been studies that showed a correlation between type 2 diabetes and plastic byproducts although the exact biological mechanism is still a little bit foggy. Now, scientists from the University of Adelaide and the South Australian Health and Medical Research Institute tested 1,500 men and found evidence of phthalates in the urine of 99.6% of participants aged 35 or over. Phthalates are one type of plastic that's commonly found in food packaging. And the researchers found that the prevalence of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and high blood pressure increased in men with higher total phthalate levels. Now, this research is not definitive by any means, but it does indicate that there could be a connection or an association between plastic exposure and an increased risk of many chronic diseases. So even though we don't have the full biological picture yet, it's probably best to avoid exposure to microplastics whenever you can avoid it. Now, the good news is that there are some simple steps that you can take to reduce your exposure to microplastics, both through your diet and through your daily life. First, you can focus on eating fresh, minimally processed whole foods like fruits and vegetables without any packaging. There's also other ways that you can do this. You can avoid microwaving food that's wrapped in plastic. You can also filter your water at home using a high-grade water filter rather than buying plastic bottled water or drinking tap water. You can also avoid using plastic cups and takeaway cups that you get at convenience stores. Bring your own mug or bring your own tumbler to a location where you're gonna drink something 
and have them serve it to you in your own cup and take it away. You can also try and make sure to avoid plastics numbered three, six, and seven. And you can see that note on almost every type of plastic packaging that you can find. You can also avoid using cosmetics and cleaning products that have microbeads and microplastics. These can be tricky sometimes and they take a little bit of research, but it can make a big difference. It, you can also dust and vacuum your house regularly. It's nearly impossible to avoid all plastics in the world today, but dusting and vacuuming can help you keep those decaying microplastics out of the air. And finally, you can avoid eating seafood and you can avoid eating meat in general. Plastic is actually introduced at almost every phase throughout the meat production process, but this is especially true of seafood due to the rising levels of microplastics in the ocean that bioaccumulate from small organisms all the way up to larger fish. Now you've probably heard of the Great Platte Pacific Garbage Patch, which are actually two distinct zones of plastic in the Pacific Ocean that are currently causing widespread harm to marine ecosystems, not only in the Pacific Ocean, but actually all over the world. Not only are microplastics accumulating inside local marine life that's close to these plastic piles, they're also causing widespread damage to oceans around the world. One simple thing that you can do to reduce your microplastic exposure is to avoid eating fish and shellfish altogether. Even if the marketing says that they are caught in the deep ocean or they're caught in open water and that they're raised in sustainable farms. So what should you take away from this video? Should you panic completely? Well, not just yet, okay? It's important that we're finding this out and we're informing ourselves every day as this new research comes out. Now, microplastics can be harmful for sure, and we're still learning about their long-term effects. But fortunately, there's some simple steps that you can take to avoid microplastics making their way into your body by changing the things that you do at the grocery store and changing your daily habits. Our simple favorite way, surprise, surprise, is to eat a plant-based diet that contains as much unprocessed, low-fat, plant-based whole food as possible. Now, you can check out the rest of our channel for more details about exactly how to make that a reality in your life. And in the meantime, don't forget to push that cute little like button with your thumb or with your mouse. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications because when you do, you'll get notified of future videos where we'll be covering more research of things that matter to you. Thank you for your time and we'll see you in the next video.